get the profit. God created you for a purpose, and that purpose must come to pass. Enough is enough. Stand up, leave them behind. Tell them I'm going somewhere. Somebody is holding a position on the right on a camp. Somebody here must go home with a blessing. I will overtake them. I will overtake them. Do you believe that? Shout hallelujah. Christ in you. With the hope. Behold, I give unto you power. Glory. What a mighty God we serve. This word is powerful. It's life. It can deliver. The word called the word of God. He's too big that you cannot contain him. What a mighty God we serve. What a glorious father we serve. I am Dr. Mess Ezekiel and I present the hour of grace. You are blessed. Chapter 20 from verse 11 to 18. Reverend George, read. That Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, she stood down and looked into the sepulchre. And see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. And they said unto her, Woman, why we pass thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she has told, said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why we pass thou? What whom seekest thou? She is supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my father, and your father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciple that she has seen the Lord, and that he has spoken these things, Unto her. Great evidence. I will give you four of them from these few verses. If you are in court, the judge may ask you, Do you have any evidence? Then you present your witness. One or two or three. They will take it. Before the sun shines, gives light to the world. Before the sun shines, the sun of righteousness has risen and gave life to his people. Have this in your mind. You can be seated. Evidence number one, eleven and twelve, verses eleven and twelve, read. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. Mary stood without the sepulchre weeping. And as she wept, mm. she stood down and looked into the sepulchre, and saw two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet. Where the body of Jesus had laid. Evidence number one. Take it. Don't just 
listen. Hear it. Receive it. It's for you. Mary stood and we he stooped down and saw two angels in white. One standing at the leg where Jesus laid, one at the head. What does that mean? Listen. That is evidence number one. What is the evidence there? One standing on the leg, the other one at the head. That means our new throne of grace is established. Our new throne of grace is established. In the Old Testament, in Exodus, in the holies of holies, two angels used to stay at the Ark of Covenant. One this way, one the other way. And they will swing their wing. One this way, the other one this way. That means one represents the Old Testament, one represents New Testament. They are looking at the center. And the center is the cross of Jesus Christ. Whether you are of the Old Testament, you will look forward towards the cross. If you are of the New Testament, you will look backward to the cross. Whosoever you are, you cannot make it to heaven unless by the cross. So the two angels came, one by the leg, one by the head, signifying our new throne of grace is established. But nothing there, Jesus is gone. Jesus was by the side. While Mary was weeping, in any tangible circumstances, the angel of God would appear to minister. Today, we don't need the ark, visible ark. Our new throne of grace is with us. You are free to come to the throne boldly. You are free to come up hither without hindrance. In the Old Testament, only once a year, the high priest will go in and he must be very careful. If not, he will die. Once a year. And that once a year is to atone for the sin of the nation of Israel. And on daily basis, if you are an Israeli, you must atone on daily basis for your sin by killing the ram. But once a year, the whole nation will be atoned for. The one that atoned for the nation is not sufficient. To the, you must atone on a daily basis by bringing sacrifice. If it were in the Old Testament, I don't think I will be a pastor. Because every week or day, I'll be killing lamb for the people. That's why 
A priest will only last for 25 years. Off he goes. It's a tedious job. But in our new throne of grace, you are free to come at any time. You will come by yourself. You don't need to go to any priest to forgive your sin or to ask any priest say pray to God for me. No. You are free to climb up to the throne boldly. Even right here now. Right here now. You don't know. The throne of grace is open. Anything you ask God In the name of our merciful high priest, he will do it for you. He will do it. So the evidence is, is a permanent throne of grace given to the body of Christ. It has never occurred at any time in history. It was because of resurrection the throne of grace accord. Let me tell you, I don't need to struggle. Any time I want to pray, I hit the throne of God. I will only like to say, Lord, I enter into the holies of holies by the blood and in your name, holding the promises of God and heaven will pay attention. It's open. Anybody that is praying in other way, other in the name of angel, or in the name of any other prophet, or any other preacher, you are wasting your energy. The throne of grace for us now is a throne of liberty. You are free to come boldly in the New Testament accept by the blood holding the unfailable word of God and when you pray Jesus the high priest is there to say to the father do it now, one thing with the New Testament prayer is that you can pray to the Father. Are you hearing me? In the name of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, you can ask in my name. And Jesus will do it. <laughs> oh, no. Jesus will do it. Jesus himself will also answer your prayer. The one you pray to the Father, Jesus will carry it. The one you pray to Jesus, he will do it. What a compound blessing. Unsearchable blessing. The evidence of resurrection, we have given a free access to climb to the throne of grace. That's number one. So Mary was there weeping. Haven't seen the throne of grace established, but she did not know what it is. Lesson number two, verse 15 and 16. Read. Jesus said unto her, Why she was weeping, Jesus said unto her, Woman, woman, why weepest thou? Sub there. Woman, where are you weeping? And I want to ask somebody here now. If you believe you are in the New Testament, if you believe that the blood of Jesus Christ atoned for your sin, if you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, if you have received him into your life, the throne of grace is not up again, 
it's up, but it's in your heart. Anywhere you are, once you hit your knees on the ground, the heaven is open. Somebody hearing me? And if you are weeping, it is because you don't know. Mary, why are you weeping? Can I tell you again this morning? You are here with that burden in your heart. You are here thinking, thinking how you are going to wriggle out from that problem. Discharge it from your heart. Be free from your heart. I want to pronounce to you your prayer is answered. You will see it. Because of resurrection. Ah. Because of resurrection, your priest, your high priest is living, making intercession for you. Why are you weeping? My brother, stop that burden in your heart. Don't take it again. Drop it. It's not your body. Oh, you have forgotten that he is our body bearer. He has taken your body. Why are you weeping? That body will run away from you now. You can't go home with your body. Whatever that body is, you will drop it. My sister, enough is enough. Wipe away your tears. Where are you weeping? Hello? This is the resurrection time. This is not a time to weep. It's a time to rejoice. Can I repeat what I said? This is not a time for you to weep. This is the time for you to rejoice. Rejoice. He's alive. Your Savior is alive. Don't weep. That body will run away. Watch. The word of God will never return back to him void. If I'm preaching Jesus resurrected, he will confirm what he has said. I'm speaking to somebody here with a heavy heart. You can't carry that burden out here. The burden is rolled away. Stop that thinking and thinking and thinking. What can you do by thinking? Your burden bearer is alive. Don't kill yourself in what you cannot solve. Why weeping? He asked me. Huh? Emma? Joseph? He says, <laughs> Why are you weeping? Why are you weeping? Have you looked by your side? Your Savior is standing by your side. Why are you weeping? Mary? Gladys, I don't know your name. You can fix your name. Why are you weeping? Can you tell me why you are weeping? Huh? No more weeping, my brother. Come on, see your eyes. This is the time to rejoice. Rejoice, I say unto you again. Rejoice. It's a time of resurrection. It's not a time for you to weep. Your Savior is alive forevermore. Give him praise and glory. Where are you weeping, Mary? Do you know what Mary answered? Read. Woman, why weepest thou? Why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Whom are you? What are you seeking this morning? 
What is that your need? I ask you, what is your need? Why are you sobbing? Why are you crying inside? Why? Why are you weeping? Uh, ignorance of salvation. Ignorance of resurrection. Huh. I'm moved now. I am moved to kneel on my staff. You are not going out without your body. You are not going out. I am standing on the gap. You are not going out with that body. Reka pasha lalalaba. No. You are a child of God. God loves you. He cares for you. What touches you touches him. You cannot go out here. Go and tell Pharaoh you are, you are coming out. Ah, tell Pharaoh you are coming out. This is a time of resurrection. It's not a time of weeping. It's a time of rejoicing. Come on, rejoice, church. Weather has changed. Before I finish, it is done. Why are you? Uh huh. Read on. What seekest thou? What are you looking for? She is supposing him to be the gardener. Uh huh. Said unto him. Say on, she said unto him. Sir, sir, if thou hast borne him, uh huh. Hands, uh -huh. Tell me where thou hast laid him. I hear you. And I will take him away. So, what? What? Mary, a woman can carry a whole dead body. Eh? Where are you carrying? <laughs> Why do you want to carry body? Only you. Tell me, you are body that you have been carrying since the last year. You can carry, and you now you want to carry it. Can I speak to somebody? Stand up. Stand up. Look at me now. I am speaking to you. I speak to you authoritatively. That burden you carry, if I count three, drop it. Do you hear me? That burden you carry, inside and outside, if I count what? Three. You do what? Get ready. This is the time of resurrection. Why we praise that? Where are you? In the mighty name of risen Christ. One, two, three. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. Clearly. Take your seat. Then that thought, take it thought. Say, take no thought. Take no thought about tomorrow. Somebody who created tomorrow is with you. Read quickly. Let me close. Read. Jesus said unto her, Woman, Woman, why weepest thou? Where are you? Whom seekest thou? Where are you seeking? What, she, what is your trouble? This is not the time for weep. To weep, it's time to rejoice. Uh huh. She supposed him to be the gardener. Yes. Said unto him. Said unto him. Sir. Sir. If thou hast borne him hence. If he have. Thus borne him hence. Tell me where thou hast laid him. Voluntary humility. And I will take him away. You humble. Voluntary humility. You can't carry that body. You, only you go carry Jesus. No way. Drop, that's why I said drop that to your body. You can't carry it. Have you, you drop it? 
Take it not. No, don't pick it again. You are going out here from this church free. That's why you come. Uh, read. Verse 16. Verse 16. Jesus said unto her, Oh, merciful Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Mary. Mary. She turned herself. She turned herself. And said unto him. That time the eyes opened. And said unto him, Rabboni. Rabboni. Which is to say, which is to say, Master. Master. Can you say, Master? Master. Can you say it again? Master. Mm, you are coming. Let it, let it sink down in your heart. Can you say it third time? Master. Is hearing you. Do you know why Jesus Call him Mary. Hmm? You don't know why he called her Mary. It's because John 10, verse 3 and 4 says so. He said, I know my sheep. I call them by their name. Jesus is calling you by your name. And you say unto him, What? Master. Ah. Finish. I mean it. I feel it. Jesus knows your name and is calling you by your name. And you say unto him, Master. This one is a healing. This one is enough. Rabunai. Hmm. Then the third lesson. I will sing close. Verse 17. Jesus said unto her. Then Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. Well, King James did not interpret that thing very well. Don't continue to hold me because when Jesus said Mary, he said, eh, eh, Master, she gripped her, him, hold her leg. Jesus, you are not going again. No. You know, you can blame him, you can blame her. Jesus, as I see you now, you can you, you don't go anywhere again. Holding the leg. Ah. For almost three days now, I miss you. You are no more going anywhere. Mm. Can I confess to you? Women, they know how to love. They know how to love. If a woman loves you, hmm, she loves you. But men, they love, you, but they are, some of their love ends in beer beer. <laughs> when a woman loves you, she will give. You everything. <laughs> she will give you. Oh, take all. But when a man loves, they love. Her. But that the idea, idea. Times you could show. Um, I hope you're not, you're not tricking me. But they love. If you know love, I love. Men, we love. But I want to tell you the men who know love. Can I tell you? The men outside. The men outside there, not the men inside here. 
the men outside no love. But the men inside, they love. Mary was holding Jesus and not letting you go. No way. And Jesus said unto her, Read. Jesus said unto her. Jesus said unto her. Touch me not. Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my father. I am not yet ascended to my father. But. But. Go to my brethren. Watch. The third lesson. Jesus said unto her. Go and tell my. For the first time. Jesus called disciples brethren. That's the third lesson. He has never called them this name before. He called them servant. He called them friends. But he never called them brethren. The third evidence, a new relationship is established. A new relationship is established. That's the evidence. Look at me. Jesus is not only calling me my servant or my son. He's calling me bro, brother. He's, Hebrew chapter 2 says so. He is not ashamed to call them brethren. You have a new name. That is evidence number three for his resurrection. If you go to heaven, if you reach heaven now, you will no more answer Raphael. You will no more answer John. You, know, you, you, you can't answer pastor. There's only one pastor, general pastor, Jesus. The only name you will answer is Brethren. Go and tell my brethren. He called him by heavenly name. Bro. Oh, you are not answering me. We are Jesus brethren. Rejoice in that. Rejoice. Is our Lord, is our Savior. The highest name He gave to us is brethren. Can you imagine Jesus calling you my brother, my sister? How do you feel? I close. Do you see the evidence? Are you noticing the evidence? Evidence number one. You are new throne of grace with two angels concurring it. Evidence number two. Why are you weeping? This is not the time to weep. It's time to rejoice. It's the resurrection time. Evidence number three. You are now my brother. Evidence number four. For today, Evidence number four, verse eight, 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples. That she has seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. And they have spoken these things unto her. She has a testimony. Evidence. I have seen the Lord. Have you seen the Lord? seen the Lord. Don't tell me anything. I have seen the Lord. I have seen him. He is in my heart. I have seen him giving me my daily bread. I have seen him protecting me all the way. I see him blessing me in and out. I have seen the Lord. Can you testify like that? I have seen the Lord. Let this be your testimony. Even from this morning. Unbelievers cannot say so. They have no eyes to see him. They can't testify. 
If they testify, it's a hypocrisy. I have seen the Lord. Have you seen the Lord? My question this morning is, my brother, have you, have you seen the Lord? Jesus said, the war will not see me, but he will see me. Because I go to my father. And I will never leave you nor forsake you. I have seen the Lord. As, and that Lord you see, we never leave you nor forsake you. You will see him more, more, more in your business. You will see him as you enter motor. You will see him protecting you while you are sleeping. You will see him controlling your family. You will see him putting money in your pocket. You will see him giving you joy of heaven. You will see him following you anywhere you go. I say, you will see him. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That is your resurrected Lord. I have seen the Lord. Huh? Let the church say, I have seen the Lord. Anything that may happen, I have seen the Lord. Let it be a slogan. Say it to anybody. Say it to your enemies. What are you trying to tell me? Huh? You want me to see my problem? Get away. I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. <laughs> Pastors. Pastors. We are mercy. I have seen the Lord. George. You hear me? I have seen the Lord. <laughs> Elias, I have seen the Lord. Huh? No, yeah. You hear me? I have seen the Lord. There's nothing Mark can do about it. Mark, see me. I have seen the Lord. Though. Paul, I'm calling my pastors. Paul, I have seen the Lord. Uh, Robert, I have seen the Lord. Chikamba, I have seen the Lord. My committee, I have seen the Lord. Head of department, I raise up my hand. I have seen the Lord. Workers, I have seen the Lord. Fire, I testify. I have seen the Lord. Brothers, I raise up my hand. I have seen the Lord. Sisters, I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. I have seen the Lord. Shall we pray? Let us stand. Let us stand. Yes, we welcome you back. We know you enjoyed this word of God. And I know that I know that I know that your life will never ever remain the same after this word. Why don't you just give your life to Jesus Christ? And we want you to come and worship with us at Ajawe Estate. Come along, we'll be expecting you there. and so on at Christian Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters 10 and 12 at Tip Salami Street at Jawa Estate along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos Miss Outrage reaching out to the troubled souls don't miss it CPM Jesus Christ is Lord God has a plan for you a plan to give you a bright future 
Come and experience expository teachings and a powerful prophetic breakthrough service this Sunday at Christian Pentecostal Mission International with God's anointed servants, Rev. Dr. O. Isakel, the General Overseer, Rev. Dr. Mercy Isakel, co pastor National and International Coordinator, and other anointed servants of God. Worship with us this Sunday at 8.30 a.m. at Christian Pentecostal Mission International Headquarters, 10 and 12 Latif Salami Street, at Jawa Estate, along Mutala Mohammed Airport Road, Lagos. You can also worship with any CPM International branch close to you. It will be a time of salvation, healing, deliverance in the presence of God. CPM, Jesus Christ is Lord. Christian Pentecostal Mission. The power of God is here.